What's up guys, Brandon Johnson here again and thanks for joining me. Today we're looking at Last Steam Engine Train, Finger Stop. That was a cool version of Doc Watson, Chet Atkins, and Leo Kotke playing this song. So definitely check it out and you can see a bunch of different ways to play this song. But this lesson is kind of in the Leo Kotke style. And it's just my interpretation of the song, so it's not exactly the way he does it, but it's pretty close and it's a good starting point for you to take this song and kind of add your own nuance to it and really make it your own. So I hope you enjoy it and let's check it out. All right, let's take a look at Last Steam Engine Train. So we're playing the song in the key of E, and we're playing this in the E blues chord progression. And we're starting way up here on this E note, which is the seventh fret A string. And a lot of times I play this with a slide up, although in the first measure there, you don't see a slide up, uh, but you could certainly slide up from the fifth fret A string to the seventh fret A string. Or you could just start it like I have in the tab, which is just on the open E. For this example, we'll play it with the slide up. So basically you're playing the slide up as the pickup into the first note of measure number one. So you're playing that slide up into an E note, and then you're hitting the low E with your thumb. So I like to play this with two downstrokes with uh, my, my thumb on my right hand. And on the A string, I like to play it with the downstroke on my thumb. And then I like to hit another downstroke with my thumb on that low E. I kind of stop the vibration of the E string with my thumb when I play that. So you can see when I hit that low E, I'm stopping the vibration of the other E. Okay, and the way I like to think about this is I'm actually sliding up into a chord position. So I'm actually sliding up from that 5th fifth, fifth fret A string to the 7th fret A string, hitting that low E, and then I'm holding this chord shape right here, which is, which is that. So it's 7th fret A string, 8th fret B string, and then 7th fret high E string. Okay, so you're kind of sliding up into that chord position, although you're not playing that chord straight ahead, and I'll show you in a second how we're gonna play that. But you're sliding up, and then you're kind of getting your, yourself into that chord position to get ready for the next part. So just practice that. Practice sliding up into that position. Okay, and then from there, you're going to work on doing like I like to what I like to call a claw motion with my right hand. 7th fret A string and the 8th fret B string while holding this chord position with your left hand. So you're sliding up into this chord position. And then right from there, you're doing the claw move on the 7th fret A string and the 8th fret B string. See how I'm doing that claw move with my right hand. It's kind of a pinch or a claw move, I don't know, however you want to call it. And when you talk about claw hammer banjo, I think that's kind of what they're referring to is the, the claw motion that you make with your right hand. Okay, so once you got that down, now we're going to work on the bend. Okay, so there's a bend here. You can see that in measure number one, we're bending from the eighth fret. B string to the 9th fret, although we're not actually going to the 9th fret, that's just the note that we're going to bend to. So we're actually bending up half a step to that note. Okay, and you'll see that we're playing that chord position still. We're still holding that chord position with our left hand, and we're bending that B string 8th fret up a half a step. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, and it's, it takes a little bit of strength with your left hand, depending on what gauge your strings are. This might be more difficult or less difficult. These are 12s I think I have on here right now. 
Okay, and then from there, in the middle of the bend, you're gonna hit the third note of that chord that we're holding, which is the high E string, seventh fret. Okay, so you're gonna be in the middle of the bend and you're gonna hit that high E seventh fret. And I like to play with my index finger on kind of an upstroke. Okay, so you're doing that claw move on the seventh fret A string and the eighth fret B string. You're bending half a step, and then you're gonna hit that high E seventh fret with your index finger. Okay, that requires a little bit of finger strength there, but if you practice that move, so you practice in the slide up to the low E, and the claw move, and the bend. Still holding that chord position, then with your thumb on your right hand, you're gonna play a downstroke on the 7th fret A string, and you're gonna place your little finger on the 9th fret. And you're gonna do a little bit of an alternating thing there, so you're gonna go, you're gonna go E, like that. So it's going to be your thumb on the A string 7th fret while still holding that whole chord position with the string bent and you're going to hit that 9th fret high E. Okay and then from there you're going to go back down to the 7th fret high E again. Once, you, once you're back down on that high E 7th fret, you're going to bend that B string back down a half step. Okay, so it's going to be... Okay, so you're going to bend it back down. right there. And you'll see that one A note right at the end, you'll see that the open A, and that's kind of just going into measure number two, so it's a slight pickup note there. So it's going to be... Okay, let's take a look at measure number one, start to finish. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, moving on to measure number two now. We're getting into the A position here and we're playing an A7 chord. Okay, so you'll see that open A, and we're going to play that with a downstroke with our thumb. And then we're going to slide into that open A7 position from the 1st fret to the 2nd fret. So we've got 1st fret D string and 1st fret B string. 
with our index finger and our middle finger, and we're going to slide up one half step. So we're going to slide up from the first fret to the second fret. After we play that first open A note. You'll notice coming out of measure number one, we have another A note. So we actually have two A notes. So we have an open A string at the end of measure number one. And then we have another open A at the beginning of measure number two. Which leads into the slide up into the open A7 position. And you want to play that with your index finger and your middle finger because we're going to be using your ring finger to play some extra notes on the high, the high E string here. So after we slide up, we're going there. So we're going to slide up into that A7 position, and then we're going to play a downstroke on the 2nd fret D string with our thumb. And then we're going to place our ring finger on the e high E string 2nd fret. Okay, and then from there, we're simply going to tape it, take our ring finger and we're going to move it up to the 3rd fret. So we, we were here, now we're going to move up to the 3rd fret with just our ring finger. And we're going to play all three of those notes. So it's 2nd fret D string, 2nd fret B string, and 3rd fret high E. We're going to play those together as a single chord. And then we're going to move it back down to 2. And then we're going to take our ring finger off back into the original A7 position. And then right at the end there you see 2nd fret B string to open E. The way I like to play that is with my thumb and my index finger. So we're coming off of these chords. Okay, so the whole thing is going to sound like this. Okay, let's take a look at measure number two, start to finish. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, now let's look at measures one and two together, start to finish. And remember, we're going to start with the slide up, although you don't have to play a slide up at the beginning. We're going to do it anyways. We're starting with that slide up to that low E string. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.
Okay, looking at measure number three now, we're playing over an open E chord. Basically what we're doing is we're riffing over this E chord. So we're gonna be primarily riffing it with our index finger on this open E chord. And we're gonna start with just an open E, low E string. And we're gonna do a little bit of a claw move here with the open E in the first fret G while holding this open E chord position. We're gonna do a little bit of a hammer on pull off move there. So it's gonna sound like this. Okay, so we're playing this around the open E chord position. After, you, after that first half there, where you're going... So you're basically you're hitting that open B after the hammer on pull off. I like to do that with my middle finger here. So an upstroke on the open B with your middle finger to a downstroke on the low E with your thumb. second half you're going to start with a hammer on so you're still holding that open E chord position then you're going to do you're going to do a hammer on with your index finger from the open G to the first fret G so first you're going to do the pull off hammer on then you're going to do the hammer on so it's Okay, now let's look at measure number three, start to finish. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, looking at measure number four now, we're playing over a B7 chord. In the open position would look like that. So we're playing A string second fret, D string first fret, and G string third fret. And then that open B thrown in there too. So right off the bat, we're playing with our thumb on a downstroke. We're playing that second fret A string, which is the B note, holding that B7 chord shape. We're going to play with our index finger and our middle finger and upstroke on the second fret G string in the open B. So it's kind of an alternating thing there where we're going thumb, index, middle. So it's, it's alternating, so we're going... See that hammer on there? So we're hammering on the from the open B to the second fret B. It's kind of a cool little sound there, but we're, we're, we're basically hammering on on that over that B7 chord position. It's kind of tough because there's actually not a lot of room there for your little finger to go. It's going basically right up against that ring finger. You actually end up playing this chord, which is almost like a ninth chord without the high E. Okay, and then after that hammer on, you're simply going to take your little finger and move it up to the third fret and play the whole chord. Then you're going to move it back down to the second fret again and then to open. So I'm really only plucking the A string, the G string, and the B string together. And when I'm playing these chord shapes, that's all I'm really doing, even though I'm actually holding the B7 chord, which includes that D string first fret, we don't actually play it.
And I just do that as, you know, just as a reference point, and it just feels like a nice solid chord to play those lead notes around. And then right at the end there, you see the slide up from the fifth fret to the seventh fret on the A string. And that's gonna get us back into position to play that beginning lick again, which starts in measure number five again. Now measure number four, start to finish. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, Three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's look at measures three and four together, start to finish. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And if you wanted to, there's kind of a, a couple alternate ways you can play measures three and four. So instead of finger picking or art articulating every single note, you can do kind of a little, a little flick with the back of your fingernail on your index finger. So you're gonna be going. See how I'm just doing a little bit of a downstroke flick. Like that. So you can certainly do that there too. I actually find that easier. And um, I do tend to play it, but it's kind of hard to tab out, so I tabbed out the individual notes. But in measures three and four there, you can definitely do a little bit of a downstroke flick with the back of your index finger. Mm -hmm. 